Hey guys, I'm back with the uh, with number seven. We have already covered uh, six problems on uh, simplifying trig identities. Now this is the last one that I want to do for this basic trig identities, and then from the next videos, I'm going to talk about the sum and difference ones. Okay, so guys, let us try to simplify this this particular um, trig expression. Now again, this is different than any of the previous examples. Now to simplify something like this, again, we're not just going to try to use the INTs right away. First, we're going to try and uh, think about the algebraic methods of simplifying things. So when I look at this expression in the radicals and then I have, a, a, I have the quotient, I try to like see if I can cross out anything or if I can take the square root of anything. Guys, if I look at this carefully, we cannot cross out anything. Neither can we actually take the radical that would help us to simplify. So if we cannot do any of those two things, then guys, you have to remember or you have to go back and recall that in that case, one has to try to do what we call as rationalizing the denominator or rationalizing in general. So how does the rationalizing process work? I'm going to quickly show you and we're going to use that process to simplify this. OK, so guys, these are all the techniques that we learn in algebra courses in pre-calc courses. And then we use these as uh, these techniques uh, when in trig and calculus and other higher level math classes um, as well. OK, so let us go ahead and start doing the do the rationalizing. Now it's going to look like there's a few different ways actually of doing it. So I'm going to do it in one of the ways. So one of the ways is like I write the cosine. It's an alpha here. Uh, guys, these angles are usually referred by theta, uh, alpha, beta, usually Greek letters. I mean, we can we also use X, Y, Zs. It does not really matter much, but the most popular ones are the theta, alpha, phi, the, mostly the Greek letters. And then the downstairs, I have one plus cosine alpha. So the rationalizing process works like this. You multiply upstairs and downstairs by a common uh, quantity because we cannot actually change this expression, right? So that common quantity, and let me use a different color for that. The common quantity is based on what the denominator is. So if the denominator is one plus cosine x, then we want to multiply by the conjugate of that, which in simple terms means if there's a one plus, then we will multiply by one minus cosine. And then uh, if I multiply the denominator by one minus cosine alpha, obviously we have to multiply the numerator by the exact same quantity. So I'm going to multiply the numerator by the same quantity, okay? Okay, now let us try, let us think, let us look at this expression and see what, how can we simplify this. Guys, you might be tempted to actually multi distribute the numerator, but if we do that, we are not going to really, that's not going to help us to really simplify this. Rather, what I would like you to do is, or what we are going to do here is, realizing the fact that these two look the same, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to write them like this, one minus cosine alpha, whole square. Am I allowed to write it like this? Yeah, sure. It's the same quantity multiplied by itself. So it's just square. And that that is something that made me like not distribute them because I realized that these are the same quantities. If I, I can, I mean, if I can write them as the square and then I know I have a radical and, and I also know that radical and square is opposite of each other. So I can just cross those out and that way I will be able to simplify, get rid of the radical, get rid of the square and simplify. Right. So, guys, you kind of have to know like what is coming ahead of the step that you are actually working on. OK. And I mean, that is that is the that is the important thing in mathematics in general. You have to be able to see what is uh, what is going to happen in the next few steps so that then you know what you have to do right now in order to make sure that the next steps actually work and make sense. OK. And in the denominator, guys, in the denominator, I am going to uh, actually well, go ahead. I'm going to uh, distribute. OK. So uh, one times one and all that. So I'm going to do that. So it's one minus cosine alpha, then plus cosine alpha, and then minus, I have minus cosine square alpha. Okay. Simplifying further, I have square root of, uh, I'm still going to write this, one minus cosine alpha whole square divided by let us see what happens in the denominator once we distribute these two we multiply them well now combining like terms these two cross out i'm left with only one minus cosine square alpha okay guys from here 
I'm going to still put this like 1 minus cosine alpha whole square. But 1 minus cosine square alpha. So when I look at 1 minus cosine square alpha, I can see that this number 1, I can use number 1 to uh, simplify this. So if I bring this cosine to the other side, so it would be 1 minus cosine square theta, that would equal to just simply sine square theta, right? So in some formula sheets, they have those identities as well. Like those, I like to think of them as subcategories of these identities. But if they are not on the formula sheet, you should be able to just look at these basic identities and be able to like uh, manipulate them and see how, how you can like get one of these from the other. Okay, so one minus cosine square alpha is simply sine square alpha. If we are not able to find an expression from like an identity here, then we got to leave it like that. But here we are able to get one, so we use one. Okay. Now it can be simplified easily, guys. This square and square root crosses out. Same thing. This square and this square root crosses out. But let me write the few few extra steps here. So the next step that I would like to write from here, I would like to break it down as radical of one minus cosine, cosine alpha whole square divided by, so I'm basically just putting the radical with the numerator and I'm putting the radical with the denominator because I don't want any of you guys to like get confused how I'm able to get rid of both the, both, both the squares and the square root. So there was a square root with both the numerator and the denominator. So you can put the square root separately with the numerator as well as the denominator. Now I can cross out square and square root from the numerator and I'll be left with just one minus cosine alpha and I can cross out the square and square root from the denominator piece as well and I'll be left with only sine alpha. And that is the best we can do in this case. This is the simplified form. Uh, that is number seven. Guys, we did one through seven. Uh, yes, all of these like kind of have something different to them. Uh, they are not exactly the same from number one to number seven, but that is the reason why I chose all these uh, numbers so that you can see many different types. Uh, guys, if you practice these and you see what is actually going on with them, whether it's rationalizing, whether it is factoring, whether it's taking out the greatest common factor, whatever the case may be in these examples, once you go over them carefully, try to do these. Start by just doing these on your own without uh, first, you, if you have to look at the solutions, look at the solutions. Uh, once you understand, once you know what you are doing, then try to do these on your own without now looking at the solution. And once you're confident doing these seven on your own, then you should go up, like go back into your textbooks uh, and try to do other examples as well and practice more of these. Okay. So guys, uh, thank you again. And uh, I will see you in the next video with, uh, with more trig INTs and uh, with more uh, formulas and simplifying experience.